presentation of Fox Sports. We are It is a beautiful Thursday night, the gateway to the west on the banks of the Big Muddy, the mighty Mississippi. It's the Brewers and the Cardinals tonight from Bush Stadium. Game one of a four-game series. Brewers matching up against the division leaders. Hi, everybody. Brian Anderson along with Bill Schroeder. Great to have you with us tonight. Telly Hughes is our reporter, and we're ready to get this series started here in St. Louis. Taylor Youngman on the mound. He's one of the six rookies that are currently in the Brewers rotation, and Taylor Youngman Rock is starting to get into an innings area that he has never been in his career. Yeah, September baseball, and it hasn't gone all that well for him. I mean, he's been outstanding all season long. But the innings are starting to rack up for Youngman. You can see his pitch is starting to get a little bit too much of the plate. His last three starts have not gone all that well. He's 0-1. He's given up 15 earned runs in 14 and two-thirds innings. But, you know, the opportunities that he's getting this month will certainly help him as he goes into 2016. And hopefully, you know, Taylor's going to be able to turn things around, making his first ever start against the St. Louis Cardinals here tonight. He's made a big impact here for the Brewers. He certainly resurrected his career that was on a little bit of stall in the minor leagues, but his September numbers a little bit concerning. Craig Council said it's like a marathon runner. We're trying to take him into an innings limit. He has never been. He's going to push over the 171 innings plateau here tonight, and we'll see how many starts he will have remaining as we get set for the final 10 games of the regular season. we got an update coming from Telly Hughes on Jonathan Lucroy and Ryan Braun. Injury reports coming up next from Bush Stadium. Stay with us.
All on Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. By Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. And by Miller Lite, the original light pilsner. Cheers, it's Miller time. The Brewers are in St. Louis with their sights set on prolonging the Cardinals' climb to clinching their third consecutive NL Central Division title. The Cardinals will enter this four-game series with the crew with a magic number of seven. Good evening from Bush Stadium, everyone. I'm Telly Hughes. The Brewers will begin this series without the services of Ryan Braun, who will miss his sixth straight game with back tightness. The news on Jonathan Lucroy is much better as Luke has been cleared by doctors to return to the field, but he will not catch for the remainder of the season. Luke is available as early as tonight to pinch hit and possibly play first base, but catching is not in his future for the remainder of this season but Luke is just happy to be back in any capacity you know whenever you're going you're dealing with the symptoms of the concussion the last thing you want to do is really anything I mean it's kind of a it's a very debilitating thing because it affects your brain you know and you're always tired and you know you don't you just feel really weird so uh, it's been nice for the last few days here to feel a lot better feel like myself and uh, feel ready to contribute obviously and uh, but uh, it's a good feeling to be back on the field ready to go the Brewers will look to put a speed bump in the Cardinals' clinching path. Jerry, Augustine, and Jeff Grayson will take a look at tonight's starters after the break.
Lewis and this telecast presented by Pottawatomie Hotel and Casino. Book your stay now. What a night for baseball. 84 degrees. Cardinals taking the field behind their right hander Michael Waka. He has emerged as one of the go to guys among all the contenders this season in the National League. Craig Council and the Brewers starting a four game series with the Cardinals tonight, hoping to disrupt what looks like another division championship season. For the Cardinals, their magic number is currently at seven to seal up yet another division title. Scooter Jeanette will lead off. Logan Schaefer batting second and Adam Lind. Middle of the order is Jason Rogers, Domingo Santana, and Hernan Perez. And then Council has Maldonado, Yadio Rivera making his first career Major League start. And Taylor Youngman on the mound matching up against right-hander Michael Waka. Yeah, Waka has not pitched against the Brewers all season long, although his numbers against the Brewers not all that great. Two starts, three games, seven earned runs in ten in the third innings. That's an earned run average over over six against Milwaukee. He started the season seven and zero, but his last three starts, he struggled quite a bit. He's given up twelve earned runs in that stretch, it includes fifteen hits and eleven walks. So struggling Waka, looking to turn things around tonight. Let's check out the Cardinals Menards defense. You got Grichik, Pham, and Hayward in the outfield. Carpenter, Peralta, Wong, and Piscotti from third to first. And no Yadier Molina behind home plate. He's got a thumb injury. It's Tony Cruz back there tonight. A yeah, major concern here in St. Louis about Yadier Molina. He claims he will be back for the postseason. The Cardinals have already clinched a, at least a wild card berth. Mark Carlson will call the balls and strikes. Brian Gorman, Tripp Gibson, and Ben May. Are the base umpires and there is the crew chief right there over at first base. Brian Gorman. Thursday night in St. Louis. And they are still filing in here, expecting a big crowd at Bush Stadium. And the Brewers and the Cardinals matching up for the final series of the season. First pitch from Waka is down low. Ball one, and away we go. Scooter Jeanette back in the leadoff spot. Comes in batting 259 this season. Brewers with a nice win yesterday. They needed that one. Beat the Cubs yesterday to salvage the final game of that three game series. The final score of 4 to 1 yesterday. Zach Davies was outstanding yesterday as Jeanette flares one down the left field line. A fair ball. And now Jeanette on his way to second. That ball was bobbled by Grichik. That could be an error. Looked like uh, Jeanette was satisfied with the single until that bobble out in left field by Grichik. A little bit too much of the play. They were trying to come inside on the scooter. He dumps it down the line, and and they were shading Jeanette, you know, toward the line, which means that Grichik, if he catches that baseball, keeps him at a single, and it will be a hit and an error. Grichik just back in the lineup defensively. He's he has elbow problems and has not been able to throw, but now he can throw enough to hit the cutoff man, so he returns to the lineup. But an error to start it puts a runner at second for Logan Schaefer. Takes one up and in. And walk a hard thrower. He can get it up there at about 96, 97 miles an hour. Cruising speed about 93 to 94. He's got a good change up against lefties and a curveball against right handers. Will also cut the fastball. Schaefer back in the two spot. That's been a familiar spot for him with all the injuries. And Ryan Braun out of the lineup. The Brewers do have Jonathan Lucroy available if you're just picking us up. Telly reported during our open tonight that Lucroy coming back from concussion will not catch. The rest of the season, but he might play first, and tonight he's available to pinch hit. A little jam shot pop up foul. And the Brewers and John Lucro would like to get him back in the lineup and at least get some at bats before the offseason so he doesn't have to worry about how he's going to feel going into spring training. It'd be a long winter if Lucro didn't get any at bats or at least play a little bit in the field. He will not be catching, but might play first. And he's been taking ground balls over at first base. Lead runner at second. Schaefer trying to deliver early with Waka on the mound. And Schaefer fouls it away. 
The Cardinals skipped a turn in the rotation for Waka. So he made a start on August 28th in San Francisco. And then they skipped a turn. He didn't come back till the 8th of September against the Cubs. Took the loss after allowing a career tying high six runs on six hits in just four innings in that game. 24 years of age, start number 29 for the season tonight. He's still going to get his 30 starts in. Cubs beat him last time out as well. Went five innings against Chicago and four runs and gave up those back to back home runs to Solaire and Bryant. Cubs won that series. Matter of fact, the Cardinals had to win Sunday just to salvage that game. But those are his three starts since being skipped in the rotation. And now the Cardinals are hoping this is the one where he clicks back into gear, gets back in his regular routine. Cardinals did announce that Adam Wainwright is going to come back and will pitch out of the bullpen to a simulated game yesterday. And Wainwright is in a position to return after Achilles surgery. Injured earlier this season. Uh, he's going to be a big boost to their roster and their bullpen. And you could certainly see Wainwright emerging as a late inning high leverage type reliever in the postseason. He's done it before. Yeah, who would have thought he'd been back? You know, he injured that Achilles in Milwaukee. And he's swinging a bat, getting out of the batter's box. He popped it and he hasn't been able to get in the game since. Schaefer still up there in a 2 2 count. And a swing and a miss. Waka strikes it out. First out of the ball game is a K for Waka, and Jeanette has to stay put at second base. Yep, mid 90s fastball. He showed, showed uh, Schaefer some change ups and fastballs. Anywhere between 94 and 96 miles an hour. He will uh, you know, change speeds a little bit on the fastball. He take a little off, add a little bit. Now Waka ranks among National League leaders in victories with 16. He's fifth in the league in that category. And he's 12th overall in earned run average as he faces Adam Lind with one out. Waka is top 10 of the National League in opponents batting average. Doesn't give up any hits. Opponents only hitting 233 against him. And he typically gets a lot of runs. The Cardinals are averaging nearly six runs per game when he's on the mound. Yeah, second most run support of any pitcher in the National League. And he's fifth in wins. He's 12th in earned run average at 3.08. That's interesting, though. It's his first start against the Brewers. The turn has not come up as the Cardinals have faced Milwaukee this season. Three balls, no strikes on Lind. Brewers trying to pick up a few wins in this season series. They are 11 and 4. The Cardinals are 11 and 4 against the Brewers this year. As Lynn walks on four straight, almost as if he was pitching around him a little bit. Yeah, didn't give him anything to hit, did he? He was just pitching around him and you know, fastballs away. And going after a couple of young right-handers, maybe get the double play ball. So two on with one out here is Jason Rogers. Got Lind hitting third Rogers in a cleanup spot. Rogers is enjoying the playing time now he's in there just about every day. A couple of starts in left field for Rogers trying to get the bat in the lineup. Rogers making just his second start in left. He started the game at third. And mostly been at first base. He has 21 starts as a first baseman this year. So this is his 24th start overall. But he's been used as a pinch hitter a lot this season. Matter of fact, he leads the team with 11 pinch hits. And he has 45 pinch hit at bats this year. A 
On the ground, up the middle, that's a base hit. Coming in to score is Scooter Jeanette. Lind on his way to third, and he is out by a mile. Well, not a good idea right there. I mean, that was uh, easy pickings for Tommy Pham. Adam Lind, an easy out at third base. Well, if Pham has his baseball in his glove by the time Lind touches second base, and and lost it. It was the base hit by Rogers to bring in a run. You can see Lynn touching the bag and just about the same time Pham has the baseball and an easy out of third. Not even a good throw. So the second out at third base goes on an 8 5 put out. But high fives in there for Jeanette. He scores the first run on an RBI single from Rogers. Rogers did advance to second on the throw. Here is Domingo Santana takes a ball. Santana hitting 271 overall this season. Got eight home runs. That combines his numbers with the Houston Astros and his numbers here with the Brewers. You saw he's hitting 277 as a Brewer and has six home runs in Milwaukee. Couple of walks yesterday for Santana, and he's shown a good eye. Santana's on base percentage as a member of the Brewers is 381. And he has a slugging percentage as a Brewer in 29 games of 521. OPS over 900 as a member of the Brewers, and he draws the walk here. So another walk, the second of the inning. Two hits and two walks. The Brewers have one in. There are two outs for Hernan Perez. It's unusual for Walker to be walking batters at this rate. Last three starts before tonight. 11 walks in 12 innings. And he's walked a couple here in the first. Not missing by much, though. The Brewers are pretty patient here in the first inning. Now Waka named to his first all-star team this season. It was a manager's selection did not appear in the game. But a first time all-star they're trying to get a finishing kick out of him leading into the playoffs. There's a ground ball. That's a fair ball just inside the bag. Rogers will come in to score Santana is around third. He's going to try to score. No Cedar holds him but Santana runs through it and scores. And all the way to third goes Perez. And it's a good thing Santana ran through the stop sign. Well, it's a good thing he didn't slow down, too. I mean, he just kept going. He saw the stop sign, but he, I think he was thinking to Ed Cedar, I can't stop at this point. That's a pretty good piece of hitting by Perez, a pitch away just inside that first baseline. And ball hits the, uh, the side wall down there, doesn't go in the corner. And Santana, who walked. Able to come around to score all the way from first base. Not sure if you're going to see Eddie Cedar hold him up. He does. He never slows down and scores easily. Yeah, good thing he ran through it. You don't want to make a habit of that, but this time it worked. It also allowed Perez to go to third base. So two runs in on the Perez double. Not sure what uh, the Cardinals are looking at. You know, Mike Matheny's looking at. His bench coach, a replay crew, is looking at something. Maybe you know whether Santana touched the plate, whether the tag was made first. Not sure. Well, whatever he's asking for, it was not validated by his clubhouse replay folks. So after a quick visit by Derek Lilliquist, the pitching coach, back at it in the first. Three runs are in. And here is Maldonado who takes a ball down and in. Got to be some concerns over Michael Waka. He has not pitched well since coming back from that one game shutdown. It's always a lot of debate whether shutdowns work or not. You get a pitcher out of his regular routine. Cardinals did it with just about all of their starters. Yeah, and didn't really they didn't none of them really responded all that well the first time through. That's when the Cardinals had that rough stretch in the beginning of September when they went two and nine. They've turned things around since. Maldonado fouls one back our way. And the count two balls and a strike.
two on pitch. Maldonado takes a strike. Maldonado hits it sharply, but right at Wong at second base. That will retire the side. However, the Brewers strike for three runs on three hits. Taylor Youngman stake to a lead early. in St. Louis and the Brewers off to a good start tonight three runs in Mike Matheny the former Brewer catcher he's got his club going to the postseason for the fourth consecutive season under his tenure and the fifth season consecutively overall Cardinals batting order turned in by Matheny Matt Carpenter Tommy Pham Jason Hayward middle of the order is Johnny Peralta Stephen Piscotti and Randall Grichuk Colton Wong Tony Cruz and Michael Walker We'll round out the starting nine that will face right hander Taylor Youngman making his first appearance against the St. Louis Cardinals and just like Michael Walker he's uh, struggling in his last three starts 0 and 1 2 no decisions 15 earned runs in 14 and 2 thirds innings pitch counts have been high have not has not been able to eat up innings like he was early on and as you mentioned making his first ever career start against the Cardinals tonight. So Youngman will face Matt Carpenter to start it. Talked about Youngman in our open stretching into an innings limit he has not seen before. And it's all part of the plan for the Brewers trying to push these guys into a, an area that they have not pitched. So you don't have to go through this process next season. Mm -hmm. Remember a minor league season ends. Typically the regular season ends. At the end of August or the first week of September. So the sixth month of baseball is not something that pitchers who are coming up from the minor leagues really ever experience. And only half of it is physical. You know, the rest of it, you have the mental grind of that extra 30 days. That can get to you until you start adjusting and learning how to get through six months of a big league season. Well, Youngman tonight making. Big league start. Number 20. Looking for his 10th win. Got 170 combined innings this season between AAA Colorado Springs and the major leagues. Well, looking to turn things around. He's got this start and maybe another. The Brewers right now have six guys listed in the starting rotation. Not sure if they're going to stick with that. If they don't, this might be the Youngman's last start. Who knows? Maybe protect those innings a little bit. An all rookie starting rotation for the Brewers. And that's a number of six. 
Brewers have six of them in there. Don't know if that's going to continue. The Brewers also have an off day Monday. So I figure somebody would be dropping back, but we'll see if everybody pitches well. They might just let it ride. Tyler Wagner is going to make his second career major league start on Saturday. And then Jorge Lopez will be making his big league debut Tuesday in San Diego. So those are the other two additions. After Nelson and Willie Peralta both shut down for the season. Carpenter rolls over one foul ball over the first. Nice effort down there. You don't see uh, coaches grab ground balls that are hit that hard with the bare hand. Chris Maloney. Yeah, tough. Chris Maloney's dad, longtime uh, minor league baseball owner in Jackson, Mississippi. Cowboy Con Maloney. He <laughs> was an appliance salesman. 2 2 pitch. Yeah, Carpenter hanging tough, as always. Carpenter has a career high at homers this year. Every home run he hits establishes a new record. 26 home runs this season. He's driven in 81. And looks like a player that has sacrificed a little batting average and on base percentage to hit with more power. They have a lot of these uh, power hitters out of the lineup for St. Louis. A call strike three Youngman with a bender. And down goes Carpenter first out of the inning for Taylor Youngman. And, and uh, you know that's been an inconsistent pitch for him in his last three starts. Not a good curve ball it hung up in the zone but it caught the strike zone. That's not where you want to leave him. Those are the ones that get hit pretty far but you know Carpenter took it. So one away here is Tommy Pham. Brewers fans know that name well from the last series in Milwaukee. Boy, did he do some damage against the Brewers in that series. And Pham has uh, earned a lot of playing time here in this final month of the season. Now, Tommy Pham against the Brewers. Six hits, two homers. Both in the same game. He drove in six runs in two starts in that series. He's already thrown out a runner today. He's been a good player. That's really been the story for the Cardinals. They have been able to get contributions from a number of players from their minor league system or players that weren't frontline starters when the year began. The yeah, guys get hurt, they call them up and they produce. Ready to compete at the big league level. Names like Grichuk and Piscotti, Tommy Pham. Yeah, yeah. The uh, loss to Molina is the one that is going to sting. There is no replacing Yadier Molina. Although he was out for an extended period of time last year, the Cardinals still did pretty good. The postseason might be a little bit different. One ball, two strikes. And Youngman up the ladder to strike him out. A fastball got him. Back to back K's for Taylor Youngman. Two gone here in the first inning. Right, let's check out the Menards Brewers defense for tonight. You got Jason Rogers getting a start at second base. He did make a start, or I should say, at left field. You got Schaefer and Santana in center and right. Perez Rivera getting his first start in the big leagues. And second game at shortstop. Jeanette and Lind on the right side and Maldonado behind home plate. Well, it is one of the joys here doing these games and uh, watching all these players make their their debuts six players called up from double a Biloxi five of the six will be making their major league debuts and Rivera has already been in a game matter of fact he came off the bench after being recalled on Tuesday made his debut that night against the Cubs as a bouncer foul off the bat of Hayward. Rivera got into the game yesterday against the Cubs and you know, he got to third base. The first batter hit a bullet right at him. So he got that out of the way quickly. Slick fielding infielder. Split time at Triple A and Double A this year. He's a native of Puerto Rico, just 23 years of age. Played mostly shortstop at Triple A and then he went back to Double A to play second base with that uh, Orlando Arcia Yadio Rivera combination. 
that uh, work so well down at the double A level. Jason Hayward in a one two count. Hayward's bounced up and down the lineup, but settling in at the third position now. He's had a good year offensively. And he lines out in left field. It is slicing foul. Hayward making a bid at an extra base hit. Just missed the strike. Yeah, he covers both sides of the plate pretty well early in the season. All he could do is hit the left, but boy, that series in Milwaukee pulling the ball with authority, hit a couple of home runs to the right. And doubles into the gap. And a terrific right fielder. Count remains at a ball and two strikes. Youngman against lefties. Those are the key at bats for him as he lines one foul in the seats. He has the crossfire fastball, which he can sink to be away from a lefty. He can also cut it, moving it into a left hander. He throws a curveball. And he has a changeup, Brock, but that's going to be the difference maker for him, don't you think? Absolutely. I mean, you got to be able to throw that change up to lefties. We see Michael Walker do it all the time. Best pitch against the left hander for sure. That change up looks like a fastball. Goes with a curveball right off the end of the bat, right to Perez. And that will retire the side. So the Brewers get three in the top of the first. Youngman with a scoreless bottom of the first, and we head to the second. on the Cardinals as we head to the top of the second inning. Good start tonight. Saturday the postseason races coming down to the wire starting on Fox in a wild card matchup potentially Pirates Cubs and then the Brewers take on the Cardinals in a game you can only see on FS1. So coverage starts Saturday at 1130 a.m. Central. That's on Fox and then 530 Central on FS1. You got it rock. I do. Yadiel Rivera will bat for the Brewers. See his numbers split between double A and triple A. I'll be started watching. in triple A, finished in double A. Yeah, I'll be watching that one in the hotel room. You're not going to come out? It's tough to get a ticket here. We can make that happen. You got a credential. You and CJ Nikowski. I thought maybe you might throw the gear on and uh, do a little do a little assistance work out in the bullpen with Marcus Hanel. As Rivera dribbles one foul. Yeah, I don't see that happening either. I'll watch you on TV. Order some room service. It's going to be a beautiful day Saturday. I recommend you get out, get a little walk in. I'll send you some texts. <laughs> They've done a great job here in St. Louis, the uh, ballpark village, which is beyond the left field wall. 
Gives you a little bit of that rooftop feel. That's a shot from Ballpark Village. Have you checked out any of the restaurants out there? I have not. I have neither. But I hear they're fantastic. They say there's a lot of red inside there. Mm, looks like it. A lot of red everywhere. That's on the site of the old Bush Stadium. Bush Stadium number two. This is number three. That was Bush Stadium number one. And before that, they played at Sportsman's Park. Actually had a World Series entirely in that ballpark in 1944, the Browns and the Cardinals. And the Cardinals won. One of their 11. 11 World Series titles. Last time was 2011 when they beat the Brewers in the NLCS on their way to that title. That was the end of the Tony LaRussa era. And then Mike Matheny takes over, and Matheny has taken his club to the postseason in his four years here. Never missed a beat, have they? Oh, that is a tight strike zone tonight. I'm not sure where Fox Tracks has these pitches, but. Walk is not missing by much tonight. And Rivera's got the count of three and two. Pitch number nine is in there and fouled away. See pitch number seven, that last curveball, a little bit off the corner. So Mark Carlson right on it. Good at bat for Rivera. Tenth pitch of the at bat, and he swings and fouls another one off. And yeah, Walker pushing 40 pitches already. The 11th pitch of the at bat on the ground through for a base hit. Yadiel Rivera. What an at bat. Well, he doesn't have many big league at bats to call on. That's going to be a great memory for him right there. You know, he'll keep that baseball and gets it in Bush Stadium against Walker. That's got to feel good for him. His first big league hit in his third major league at bat. On his 11th pitch seen in this at bat. There it is. Pitch going down and in on him and just out of the reach of Carpenter at third base and into left field. Get to keep that one. Uh, what a thrill for him. Had a few of those this year. Taylor Youngman, one of the other players to make his major league debut this season. As he punts one foul. Youngman has really shown he can handle the bat well. Youngman has 10 hits. He's 10 for 34 at the plate. Has a couple of doubles this season. Came up in early June. Gets a bunt down. Walker thinking two. It's on its way out there. Oh, first he's late. Too firm back to the pitcher and Walker able to get the lead man at second base. Yeah, good thing Youngman running hard down the line. It would have been a double play. Got it down, but butted it right at Michael Walker. Had something on it. That's an easy out at second. And look at Youngman scoop down the line. Staying away from the double play. So one away, the pitcher is at first. Back to the top of the order now, and Scooter Jeanette. Little flare foul. Very similar to the line he had his last time up. Jeanette has actually seen Walker more than any other Brewer. He is now four for eight in his career against Michael Walker. In the left field, Richard. Catch. Did he, number two. he didn't have to move, did he? Position him perfectly. Hey, the Brewers return home for the final series of the season next Friday, October 2nd. It's Sunday the 4th as the Brew Crew closes out the 2015 season with a matchup against the Cubs. Reserve your spot today at Brewers.com slash tickets.
Here's Logan Schaefer for the young man at first base. Brewers lead three nothing, scoring all three in the first, and an RBI single from Rogers. That came with two outs, and then a two out, two RBI double by Hernan Perez. Rogers single came with one out. The second out was on that play. Lynn thrown out at third base. And going from first to third. So aggressive base running by the Brewers in that first inning. One worked, one did not. Follow. It's been a struggle for Michael Waka, who burst onto the scene in the postseason of 2013. That was Waka's first year in the big leagues. He made nine starts after appearing in just 15 games in his second season of pro ball. He made five postseason starts and was four and one with a 2.64 ERA. That one loss came in the World Series. He didn't lose a game until Game Six of the World Series that season. Now if the Cardinals hope to get back to the postseason. It's going to come down to pitching once again. Offense been a little bit shaky throughout the season. Youngman takes off and Schaefer fouls it away. Of course, you could say that about everybody, right? These, these days, offense up and down. You got to have the pitching and the bullpen. Cardinals certainly have the bullpen to go with the starters. Hard to pick a favorite right now among the three Central Division teams that are going to be in the postseason. They all have holes in their roster, but they are different and they all are very talented. In a number of areas. We're talking about that today down near the dugout with Brian Braun and Bob Nightingale of USA Today. And he was asking who who we think is the leader, the top team in the division. It's tough to get a handle on it. Brian Braun was saying that he could make a case for all three teams winning a World Series this season. Mm -hmm. It's not always the best team on paper, but the hottest team. As Schaefer draws the walk. Boy, and this rough start for Michael Walker continues. I'm sure Matheny is already thinking about an exit strategy here. We're only in the second inning, but Walker's pitch count is at 51. Yeah. yeah. Plenty of arms down in that Cardinals bullpen. And you would imagine that if one more base runner, they might get somebody up. Only the second inning and 51 pitches. Here's Adam Lind. Two outs, two on. Got the pitcher Youngman at second base who runs well. Powerball home run leaderboard looks like this with Lind third on the club with 20. Hit his 20th in Chicago, an opposite field home run. Braun shut down for now with back tightness at 25, and then you got Davis with 23. Oh, and to the count. Deals 0-2. Lynn fouls it away. It's that change up from Walker. That was a good one down in the strike zone. He's been leaving him up. Brewers have been able to foul him off, get base hits. Then basically fastball change up for the left-handers. Haven't seen too many curveballs. See what he does here. 0-2. That one 
misses a fastball 96 with the fastball. Now if you're into your college rivalries this is a rivalry matchup tonight. Michael Waka from Texas A&M University and Taylor Youngman from the University of Texas. There's a shot right to the shortstop Peralta and that will retire the side. A lot of pitches though the Brewers fail to score but they tack on to that pitch count and it's three nothing Milwaukee going to the bottom of the second. Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Marshfield Clinic. Don't just live, shine. By Pickley Wiggly, the official supermarket of Fox Sports Wisconsin. And by Hupe and Abraham, 800-800-5678. Hupe and Abraham, tell them you mean business. Brewers up three to nothing as we go to the bottom of the second inning from St. Louis. And now time for you to tweet us. Your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag Wisdata Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. And it's all brought to you by T Mobile. Under the Thursday night lights of Bush Stadium, and Mike Matheny has seen his starting pitcher get into some trouble early in this one. A three run first for the Brewers, a soaring pitch count. And we'll see if Youngman can continue on here in the second. Had a three up, three down first with two strikeouts. Here's Johnny Peralta. Takes a strike. Peralta has had another good year at the plate. A shortstop that gives him a lot of production offensively. Very steady shortstop. He doesn't get to much, has limited range, but everything he does get to, he makes plays on. He only has six errors this yeah, year. Not a big arm, but gets rid of it quickly. Very accurate. But he can hit for sure. No balls, two strikes on Johnny Peralta. Youngman and Waka were drafted a year apart. Youngman went in the first round of the 2011 draft. He was 12th overall in 2011. Waka went the next season. He was 19th overall in the 2012 draft. And because of Waka's fast rise to the big leagues and all the postseason exposure. 
it's Taylor Youngman who's the new name on the scene this year. Waka made it to the big leagues the next season in 2013 and had that great run in the postseason. Yeah, Waka experiencing a uh, an innings jump from last year. Peralta in the air right field that's going to be playable Santana eases back and there is out number one. Yeah, walking around 175 innings this year 107 last year. Here before 140. And shoulder issues last year and. Regardless of the reason I mean it's a pretty big jump 75 innings. A shoulder stress reaction. Whatever that is. That was early in the season. They used to call it a sore shoulder. Uh huh. I had to put him on the disabled list eventually in late June. And didn't come back till. Till early September. Thus only 107 innings. So that's a significant jump from one year to the next. The Scotty swings and fouls one back. Now remains no balls, two strikes. Stephen Piscotti, a 305 hitter, coming into play today, has five homers, 33 runs batted in. Piscotti's another new name for the St. Louis Cardinals. This is his 58th game. Another guy banged up, bad elbow. Matt Holiday made his first start since coming back from the disabled list yesterday. Even though he's been in a pinch hit role a few times. Matt Adams is back. Neither one of them in the lineup here tonight as Youngman strikes out Piscotti. His third K and he's retired the first five he's faced. And his best curveball tonight right here. Look at a break on that baby. Big break going straight down and Piscotti out in front over the top. That's the curveball he was throwing when he first came up. You start tiring those curveballs have a tendency to hang. You lose your location. Not necessarily velocity that you lose when you get tired. And he goes right back to the hook. Gets strike one on Randall Gritchick. See that sleeve on the right elbow of Gritchick. He is unable to throw the ball with any kind of velocity at all. Matter of fact, it shut him down. They were not able to use him. They had set up a, a scene where Gritchick could still play center field and he would flip it to an outfielder right. that was nearest to him to throw it in. Just trying to keep his bat in the lineup, but that experiment did not work. Got exposed quickly. Right. And they ended up shutting him down. Now he's back. He can throw, but he can't throw well. He can throw enough to get it to a cutoff man. But he's in there because of his back. And so you just wonder if he's feeling a little more pressure to swing the bat to hit because of that fact, knowing he can't contribute like he wants to defensively. One two pitch. And he lines one just over the glove of Perez. Richard thinking about second he'll hold up. And that is a two out two strike single here in the second inning. Yep, and uh, Grichik's along the elbow and not the Scotty. I had him flip flopped. Uh, Grichik still bad elbow or not still able to be quick on the inside part of the plate. Hits that one hard down the line. Good job by Rodgers getting in quickly. Uh, Grichik brings. A big bat to this lineup and he's hit for power this year as well 17 home runs for the Cardinals. So that's a bat they're anxious to get back in there. Runner at first with two away the first hit of the game for the Cardinals here is Colton Wong now. Wong's got a little pop himself with 11 homers. Now Youngman for the most part has been able to get ahead of hitters out of the gates tonight. Not so here against Wong. He's behind him 2 and 0. Oh. Make a mistake to this guy. He can get him right back into the ball game very quickly. Pretty good power for a second baseman. 
Last time the Brewers saw Wong. Last week he was just coming back from a calf strain. Which had him on the disabled list. Or had him out for a few days. And normally a base stealer, but not with that calf issue. It's been one of the most productive second basemen in the National League. Third and homers. Third and runs batted in among National League second basemen. Swing a foul back. Big swing by Wong. Pretty good offensively, but struggles out at second base. Makes a lot of errors. Cardinals have struggled defensively this year. Yeah, very unusual, uncharacteristic for a Cardinals team. Thought their defense might improve with the addition of Jason Hayward, one of the great defenders, has a couple of gold gloves. But uh, that has not been a case around the infield. 2 1 pitch is inside for a ball. 3 and 1 the count now on Wong. <laughs> Youngman deals. Wong swings and a little one hop liner out to short. Nice play, Rivera. Jam shot from. Colton Wong, Taylor Young, but out of the inning, two scores in the books. Lewis Brewers with a 3 0 lead over the Cardinals, and the Brewers have gotten off to a hot start in spite not having Ryan Braun in the lineup as he missed. He misses his sixth consecutive game due to back tightness. And we talked to Craig Council before tonight's game, and he said his status remains the same. He will not play until he's pain free. No need to rush him back if he's not ready to come back. So that's still a day to day type of deal. But as for Jonathan Lucroy, the, mo the news is much better. Doctors have cleared him to return to action and Luke Croy is available to pinch hit tonight and moving forward Craig Council said he would hope to at least get him one start at first base but as Rock talked about in the earlier innings that it's good for Luke Croy to come back and get some at bats before the end of this season and go into the offseason feeling good about how he's able to finish this one up. Yeah, no question thanks tell he was swinging the bat really well too before the. Concussion that was on a foul tip hit him right in the mask and the jaw. And uh, he talked to Telly earlier today about the sensation he was going through. He didn't feel like himself. He was sluggish, kind of in a fog. And those concussion uh, protocols are in place for a reason. You certainly don't want a player out there. It's a much safer game these days. That is an injury that has only recently, in the last decade or so, 
started to uh, be revealed as dangerous as it is as Rogers sends Hayward back he'll make the catch on the track. And Jason Rogers is out number one for Michael Walker here in the third inning. Yeah, we didn't know anything about concussions back in those days. You take one to the face mask and you kind of wobbles you a little bit. You get a little bit fuzzy, but I think the equipment has a little bit to do with it. I mean, Luke Roy has been toying around with getting a different mask. He's got a very light titanium mask. I mean, it's, about, it's almost like a feather, very light. You wonder how much protection you actually get with that. And it's comfortable to wear. It's not real heavy, and but you know, does it really protect you as well as the old mask that we used to use? I actually gave Luke one of my old masks. I had it at home, really heavy, mm -hmm. thick wire mask, and uh, I'm going to toy around, play around with it, and see how he feels with it in the off season. A line drive out. Santana hit it hard, but right at Wong for the second out of the inning. Those old masks, a lot heavier. The padding was a lot more padding on it, and as much as a little bit uh, more uncomfortable to wear in a long game, it uh, protects you a little bit more. Not like that. Now those hockey-style masks, they say they're good on the glancing blows. They deflect the glancing blows, but the direct hits, which you get a lot of, there is less padding in there than. And the traditional style mask. That's what I've heard from a few catchers. Mm -hmm. It's tapered, you know, it's more of a, a little more of a point to it in the front so that, you know, there's not as many direct hits. There's more glancing blows than that of the conventional mask. Perez, a slow roll to third base. Carpenter will make the play. Apparently, that was close. And that'll be a three up, three down inning. And a quick inning for Michael Walker, his best of the night. We're headed to the bottom of the third. The Brewers are up 3 0 in St. Louis. Looking down at Bush Stadium on the banks of the Mississippi River in downtown St. Louis. And it's three to nothing here. The Brewers have a lead over the Cardinals. Our carsuit.com trivia tonight, which MLB team was the last World Series champion and the first team that season to clinch a postseason berth. Good question. Is that camera on the arch? That's the angle that the arch is right there. Could be. Seems to be floating though, so I feel like it's just maybe the lens coming back. <laughs> it's a Brewers fans in the ballpark tonight. Little bit of blue in amongst all the red. There is a lot of red in there. Representing well. Saw a girl with a sign. She said, "Move to St. Louis, but my heart is with Milwaukee." Got all of her Brewers gear on. We appreciate that. Good job. Now Taylor Youngman back to work. Two scoreless. Brewers giving him three runs in the first inning to work with. Has three strikeouts thus far. And he's got Tony Cruz leading off for the Cardinals. The pitcher Waka next and into the top of the order. 
A lot of eyes on Tony Cruz now. In the absence of Yadier Molina, Cardinals have a lot of cushion to win the division. Their magic number is currently seven. Any combination of a Cardinal win or a Pirates loss that reaches seven will secure a division championship for St. Louis. So if you're going to sit Molina, who's out with torn ligaments in his thumb, not as major as it was last year. This is the time to do it, but still major questions with Molina trying to come back as yes. Cruz draws the walk. Same thumb, same problem. Not as bad, but you know, coming a lot later in the season this year. Cardinals have Travis Tartamella as their backup catcher now. And easily is here as well. Plenty of options at least to get him through the season. So the first walk issued by Youngman puts a runner at first with Waka coming up. Handles the bat fairly well. He's a 160 hitter. Walker with eight hits this season. Up there to bunt. There's a strike. Strikes now. Yeah, that, uh, that curveball can be a tough pitch to bunt. You try to move your bat as baseball drops into the strike zone, and sometimes you'll pop it up. That's what Youngman's hoping for. Or even better, a miss. Squares again 0 and 2 and he bunts this one foul and that'll be a strikeout for Youngman. Number four for Taylor. Waka unable to advance the runner. And the first out of the third inning. Back to the top of the order now with Carpenter. Hey, tonight's having the game winner. Lucky's East Side Pub in Wausau. They call the Brewers in the next 24 hours. They get 40 Miller Light beer pen tickets on April or May 2016 Brewers home game. So for courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Light. A lot of Woodchucks fans up there in Wausau. Yeah. Here's Matt Carpenter. Second time through against Youngman. Had to go up to uh, Wausau. Hit Rib Mountain. You're a skier, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Sure. More like a like a like a fall and tumbler. Yeah, just kind of. Runaway freight train ski down. Ski a little, roll a little. Down the hill. Walk up the hill a little, ski a little, roll a little, walk up the hill a little. That's about how it works. Big baseball fans up there in the Wausau area. Mm -hmm. They've got a nice, nice group going up there. The Woodchuck. Swing and a miss and a big curveball from Youngman. Yeah. Woodchuck baseball. The Northwoods League. That league is really starting to establish itself as one of the best college wood bat leagues, summer leagues in, in the country. Yeah, the Lakeshore Chinooks up there in Mequon. Robin Young's team. Youngman's got Carpenter 0 and 2. And on the ground, right to Jeanette. Should be a double play. It is. Boy, Rivera's got a cannon, doesn't he? He's fun to watch. That was room service. 4 6 3 double play to win the inning. Three scoreless for Youngman.
on Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light pilsner. Cheers, it's Miller time. And by the Wisconsin Lottery, reminding you to please play responsibly. Good start tonight for the Brewers in Cardinal Nation. 3-0, the Brewers have the lead. On our way to the fourth inning now, and a reminder that the Bucks are taking the show on the road. The second annual Bucks Own the Future statewide tour. You can meet, meet uh, Jabari Parker and Rashad Vaughn, along with Bango. The Milwaukee Bucks dancers will be there. Other Bucks entertainers are joining as well. They'll hitch a ride on the Fox Sports Wisconsin Bucks Fan Express. Go to FoxSportsWisconsin.com for the full schedule appearances throughout the state of Wisconsin. Michael Waka back on the mound. He starts his fourth inning, coming off a quick three up, three down third inning. Brewer scored three against Waka in the first inning on three hits and two walks. Maldonado grounded out to end that first inning. Brewers got RBIs from Perez, who drove in a pair, and Jason Rogers in the first. That's a pitch here that's been a little bit better. Second and third innings to change up. Missing with it, leaving it up in the strike zone, and the Brewers took advantage of it. And a strike. Two and two on Maldonado. A liner to right, a base hit. Maldonado with a single. He's hit the ball hard twice tonight. And his first hit of the ball game, a leadoff single for the Brewers. There's always extra in center for Maldonado when he plays the Cubs. Yadier Molina is good buddy in the dugout. Always wants to put his best foot forward, both at the plate and behind home plate. And the Cardinal catcher is his mentor. He's looked up to not just Yadier, but all the Molina brothers. It's the reason he decided to catch as a young player, Puerto Rico. And one Puerto Rican to another, Yadiel Rivera. I know he's excited to be not just in the big leagues, but be with his countryman, Martin Maldonado. Rivera. Is an excellent player. He gets a little bit overlooked in the Brewers system with all these very talented shortstops, starting with Gene Segura at the big league level and then one of the game's best shortstop prospects in Orlando Arcia. And then they added Sardinius in the offseason, who's a shortstop. Yeah, but he keeps plugging along, putting up the numbers, doing a good job, whether at any one of the infield positions that they ask him to play. You're right. I mean, that double play that the Brewers just turned to end the third inning, that was a bullet rocket that Rivera threw over to first base. Yeah, he plays a lot of second base, but that's no second baseman's arm there. More equipped to play third. That's where he made his major league debut a couple of nights ago. On the ground, Peralta gloves it. He'll go to second for the out there and lead it first. Rivera able to beat it out. Cardinals do get the lead out, however, one away in the inning. As Rivera reaches on a fielder's choice, and the out goes 5 4. So that'll bring up Youngman again. The pitcher reached on a fielder's choice his last time up, unable to get a bunt down. He got the bunt down, but the out was at second base. Unable to get the sacrifice bunt. Shows bunt and able to take a ball. Youngman surveys the infield. Chris Carpenter, or rather Matt Carpenter, is expecting a bunt at third. He's a few steps in on the grass. He has to try and bunt it toward first base. But Scotty's got to hold the runner. 
And he pops it up. Easy play for Tony Cruz and out number two. Hey, better seats, bigger savings, exclusive benefits, Brewer season seat holders. Enjoy the best seats at low prices. Plus, have access to a number of exclusive benefits not available to the general public. Place a deposit on 2016 season tickets. Call 414 902 hits. Or go to brewers.com slash ticket plans. Top of the order here is Scooter Jeanette. He's one for two tonight. His hit was a little flare down the left field line. And his out was a line drive. A bullet right to Gritchick in left field. Got the plate presented by Wendy's. Half swing roller out to Peralta. Quick shovel to second, close there, but out. And the inning is over. And Waka seems to have settled down after a three run first. Just sitting there on the rock must have been one of that holidays homers. Three nothing Brewers have the lead. It's beautiful art. How to get there? It's just artwork. It's very artistic. Wow. Right. Carsuit.com trivia: Which MLB team was the last World Series champion and the first team that season to clinch? That would be the New York Yankees of 2009. First team to clinch a postseason berth. And the St. Louis Cardinals, maybe. So it's a good history there. Carrying over one season to the next. The Cardinals have the best record in the major leagues. They have a chance to win 100 games this season. They're four wins away from that mark. They're 96 and 56. Taylor Youngman's had a good curveball tonight, and he starts Tommy Pham with one, gets in there for a strike. Your fam was disappointed to hear the news that Jimmy Nelson was shut down for the year. A neurologist shut the season down for Nelson, even though he's feeling good. He said he feels normal. He was ready to pitch, but uh, too much risk. And uh, the Brewers will not have Nelson pitch anymore. He will continue with the ball club. It was the line drive from Fam that hit Nelson. And that shook him up, too. Tommy Fam. Yeah, nobody likes to see that. I had to feel good for Fan to see Jimmy walk off under his own power. Swing and a miss. Two and two the count on Fan.
Ryan had four hits in that series against Cincinnati. It was four for 11, and since September 15th, he's slugging 968, second highest mark in the National League, and he's hitting 419 since that date. That's why he's getting the playing time. Yeah, he's been in the lineup a lot. He's a rookie recalled from Memphis, which is triple A for the Cardinals in mid August. Going on six weeks in the big leagues now. And they'll ask if he went. He did not. Able to check his swing. That's a walk. Get ahead quickly. Do a strike first pitch, and uh, then the battle was on. And then second walk for Youngman. Both of the walks have been leadoff walks and have come in back to back innings. Young been able to erase the leadoff walk last inning with a double play ball. Now he's got Hayward at the plate getting into the heart of this St. Louis batting order. Which looks a lot different without Matt Adams and Matt Holiday. Hayward takes a strike. And we said that when they. Cardinals were at Miller Park and they swept Milwaukee. Yeah, pitching like the Cardinals, you don't need a whole lot of runs to win on a normal night. Hayward will be a highly sought after free agent at season's end. Traded to the Cardinals from the Braves. Shelby Miller deal. Cardinals have the tragic passing of their starting right fielder, Oscar Tavares. Wearing that patch, OT. Now we were here for a beautiful ceremony earlier this season in the Cardinals home opener. Remembering Oscar Tavares. Yeah, incredible talent. I mean, talk about a five tool player, right? Two balls and a strike. And Hayward on the ground, pass Lynn, the base hit. Fans on his way to third. Hayward will stop at first. The Cardinals with two on to start this inning. Jason Hayward with a single. And it's first and third. And falling behind the count again. He gets strike one, but a 2 1 pitch. Yeah, a little bit of a wrinkle in it. Down and in. And Hayward able to shoot it by Lynn. It was holding the runner at first base. And the Cardinals in business with nobody out in the fourth inning. First real trouble for Taylor Youngman. And he's got a good hitter to deal with in Johnny Peralta. Brewers will try to turn a double play and allow the run to score if they can get a ground ball here. As Youngman deals him strike one. Youngman's only given up two hits to go along with two walks. First time the Cardinals have had multiple runners on base. Hayward is a threat to run. Uh, this would be a good time to send him with Peralta. A double play opportunity for the Brewers. As a matter of fact, Peralta's bounced into more double plays than any other Cardinal. 22. And there goes Hayward. And a swing and a drive into deep center field way back. And Johnny Peralta has tied it up just like that. No one pitch. He got ahead again. I mean, first three hitters in this inning, he's been able to get ahead. 
No balls, one strike. This time, looks a little bit too much of the boat. Johnny Crawford with a nice, easy swing and out of here to center. No cheap one right there. First throw, but tough to hit him out to center field in this ballpark. And just like that, we're all tied up. Johnny Peralta with home run number 17. Now 67 runs batted in, and Youngman will have to start all over again. Three run home run. Walk single homer. And second time through has been a little bit more of a problem for Taylor Youngman, which is what you would expect. Cardinals have never seen him. First time through the batting order, pretty good. One hit. They're getting better swings. And now Drick uh, Piscotti rather sends one way out of here. And the Cardinals have the lead. Steven Piscotti with number six. They can strike in a hurry. And these aren't. The regular names you're used to. And check it out. First pitch. Middle in and Piscotti able to pull the hands in and knock it way back over that really big head. And into the bleachers. I thought it's crushed. Well, Youngman's got to gather himself now. Hostile environment here. Crowd is up. They are loud. Two swings of the bat, four runs on the board, and the Cardinals have a lead here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Now Gritchett takes a strike, a curveball. Ground ball to Perez. And there's out number one. Yes. One of the sides of fatigue is you know giving up home runs and uh, you know, Taylor starting to give up a lot of them. Last four starts, he's given up eight homers. Check that seven home runs. And there was a long stretch where he had only allowed two home runs. When he first came up, he went a good long time just keeping the ball in the ballpark. Three home runs through August. And he's given up seven now in September. One away for Wong. And a wave and a miss. Youngman strikes him out. Maldonado will have to secure it at first. Does so. And there is the second out. Youngman with five Ks. Now the Brewers got three in the first. Rogers and Perez with RBIs. Now the Cardinals with four here in the second, uh, fourth inning. Three run homer by Peralta. Big blow. That'll bring up Tony Cruz now. Cruz had to walk his last time up. This is the start of a four game series here this weekend. And then the Brewers will have Monday off. They go to San Diego to start a series Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, then back home beginning the final three game series of the year Friday, Saturday, and Sunday against the Cubs. Ten games left, including tonight. And this season cannot end fast enough for the Brewers. However, they're going to try to get all they can out of it as far as evaluation goes. Slow roller, nice play, Perez, and the inning is over, but big damage done. 
A walk, a single, a three run homer, and then a solo homer has the Cardinals on top. the board on two swings of the bat to take the lead 4-3 as we move to the top of the fifth inning time to check in with the crew in the community beyond the diamond is a series of community outreach events that will take place each month during the season all of which involve partnering with brewers community foundation players and coaches brewer wives alumni and team personnel working in the community the community events will be funded in part by brewers community foundation and focused on the areas of health education recreation and basic needs. VA. All right, Telly, thanks. It's a new game here. The Cardinals now lead it 4 3. Youngman giving up back to back home runs in the fourth inning from Peralta and Piscotti. Logan Schaefer will start it for the Brewers, then Adam Lind, and then Jason Rogers. And on the first pitch, a little soft liner out to Grichuk in left field for out number one. Playing Jeanette Schaefer very shallow and toward the line, and it's worked. Second time that Grichik barely has to move for a fly ball. And that'll bring up Adam Lind. Michael Walker settling in here now after a shaky start to the game. Walker had over 50 pitches in his first two innings. Well, he's a guy that does get a lot of run support. You talked about it before the game started. Almost six runs a game when he's out there in his starts. 5.9 runs per game, and that's second most in the National League. Good spot to be in. Walker facing Lind, and he lines one foul right behind first base coach Mike Guerrero. Look out over there. Inside. Two 400 foot home runs by the Cardinals in that fourth inning. Peralta's was measured at 403. Piscotti's at 413. Just 413 for Piscotti? Wow. That's all. I go a little bit further than that, but I'm not doing the measuring. He did uh, his velocity off the bat was his exit speed was the same as Peralta 105 ground ball back in the grass is long and Lind is out two gone in the fifth inning. Well as promised earlier in the game we have selected the data strong fan photo of the game tweet your strongest fan photo to hashtag this data strong fan you'll have a chance to be featured in a broadcast it's all brought to you by T-Mobile. And it comes to us from Tammy. Good job, Tammy. 
You made it on the air. Two outs, fifth inning. Here is Jason Rogers. Drove in a run with a single in the first. And then he flew out to right his next time up. And there's a line drive base hit. Jason Rogers just keeps hitting. Two out single. And the tying run is aboard. He has been yeah. so impressive. Stays right on a breaking ball from Waka and, and down toward the end of the bat, but he's able to keep that bat in the hitting zone long enough to level it out. Goes out and gets it, and a base hit to left. No question his ability to hit, patient at the plate. The challenge for the Brewers is to find him a position. There's a strike to Santana. Well, Santana's had two good plate appearances. He walked in the first, and then he hit a shot, a line drive right to Wong at second base his next time up. You know, in the National League, you just can't call yourself hitter. That's uh, American League. Mm -hmm. Got to have a position. But nice to be called hitter, though. That's yes. a pretty complimentary nickname. I don't typically keep you around a lot longer than being called fielder, unless you're Prince Fielder, and then <laughs> you're fine. Or Cecil. Yeah, he can hit, though. Jason Rogers. Two and one. Santana lays off. Three balls and a strike. Or Mike Felder. Mm -hmm. Tiny. Fantasy camp coach. <laughs> How is fantasy camp coming by the way rock you, you filling up funny she asked yeah we got a few spots left we are filling up how many spots do you have left got about eight Ooh, coming down to the end yeah start selling them at a premium now I bet there's a shattered bat and Walker will make the play boy the head of that bat went all the way out past second base inning is over Walker has a shut down fifth inning. Cardinals with a one-run lead and get ready for winter with the Brewers final all fan giveaway of the year the retro knit cap given to all fans at Miller Park on Sunday October 4th as the Brewers take on the Cubs to reserve your spot at the Brewers final all fan Saturday or Sunday I should say of 2015 go to Brewers.com slash tickets and that promo was going so well until they said Saturday instead of Sunday well that's okay man Look, it's been a long season, and you're you can't be great at everything, Rock. Yeah, just gotta, you got to finish strong, though. I mean, Matt LeFay would be disappointed. If yeah, yes, he would. He would be very disappointed. Oh, Matt LeFay. 
Getting ready for Badger football this weekend, or I don't know, maybe next weekend. Do they play this weekend? Oh yeah. I know they've got Iowa. They've, oh, they're Hawaii Saturday, this Saturday. Yeah, they that's right. Got a game. You know who's who played at Hawaii? Colton Wong. So maybe you can go down there and drum up a friendly wager with him. You think? Maybe a little uh, a little lunch at Joe Buck's. You think he'd want to go to lunch with me? <laughs> I think he might. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to go to lunch with you, Rock? That's right. I usually end up paying. <laughs> Greg Garcia's pinch hitting here, so Walker's out after five innings. Trying to keep him fresh. He now has the lead, got a chance to win this game. Garcia rolls to Lind, and Youngman is there for him for out number one. I think I'd have to give uh, Wong some points, wouldn't I? I believe you might, unless his pride takes over. All right, top of the order here is Carpenter, who is 0 for 2. A strikeout and a double play. I think I head over to Charlie Gito's though instead of Joe's. I've been to Joe's. No, it's Joe's today. Did you? Did you mention that you know Joe Buck? I didn't. I didn't see him. No. Oh, okay. I think everybody says that. Mm -hmm. Youngman. Now third time through the batting order. Second time didn't go so well. Second time through the order, the Cardinals go three for eight with four runs. Three run homer Peralta and the solo home run by Piscotti. A yeah, second look at Youngman. Yeah, first time he's faced the Cardinals. And making adjustments and uh, Youngman made some mistakes and the Cardinals jumped on him. In there, a strike. You ever been to Charlie Gito's? No. I'd be glad to take you tomorrow. If you okay. Want. What was the place we went to? The Italian place down there on the hill by where Yogi Berra grew yeah, up. Yeah, I forget the name. Dominic's of it. maybe? I think it was. Yeah, right by Yogi's house. Yeah, and the school that Yogi and and Joe Garagiola went to is still standing there. It's still right across the street from this famous old Italian restaurant. Really, really good food. Yeah, I might head over to uh, Yogi's house just to check it out on Saturday. Yeah. If you get a chance, read Bob Nightingale's story on Yogi Berra and USA Today. Today is a beautiful piece. Very well done. Saw Bob before the game and been talking about that. Yogi was such a part of St. Louis baseball history, not just Yankees baseball history. From here, he and Joe Garagiola were childhood friends growing up on the hill, the Italian section of uh, St. Louis. The great Yogi Berra passed away at age 90 yesterday as Carpenter draws the walk. That's three consecutive innings with walks for Taylor Youngman. Maybe yeah, this time there's one out when Carpenter draws the walk. Not that that's any better. And they're telling us up here that um, Jack Buck. Lived up there for a long stretch of time. Oh, is that right? So Jack Buck, Joe Gargiola, and <laughs> Yogi Bear. That's a pretty good neighborhood. Mm -hmm. That's a cool little neighborhood. And uh, you enter in, and it's on a hill. So you go up the hill, and there's signs everywhere, and the Italian flags, and just great restaurants, great community. It's a must stop when you come to St. Louis. Go to the Arch and Bush Stadium and uh, the legendary Jack Buck. He was one of my favorites. Yeah. Football and uh, baseball, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. Monday Night Football on the radio for years with Hank Schramm. Yeah. Jack Buck was on the call when my older brother Mike made his Major League debut, and he, I'll never forget the line. <laughs> <laughs> because Mike gave up a few runs in that game. That was that Mark Witten game. He gave up two of those four homers that Witten hit, and Jack Buck said, "Well, no calls to Georgetown tonight," <laughs> which is where we're from. But you were wrong, Jack. He did call Georgetown that night after he made his major league debut. That's a pretty good Jack Buck, by the way. No, oh, thanks. He was great. 
He was actually uh, very instrumental in my career. Actually, uh, when when uh, he was doing Monday Night Football on the radio, I was working for Monday Night Football on the production team, and uh, I used to see him every week and would talk to him. I told him I was doing minor league baseball. Asked him if I could send him a tape. He said, "Don't bother sending me a tape." Here's a list of names of producers that you want to send a tape to a demo tape back when they actually were tapes. A swing and a miss. Tommy Pham out in front of a curveball. So that list really started the whole process for me as a great producer named Norman Bear. And uh, he produced Jack Buck, he produced Vin Scully, he's uh, one of the legendary producers, has passed away, but I think he did uh, over 50 World Series. CBS Radio Sports. And uh, he was very helpful in my early play by play career. So, Jack, uh, did you a uh, friendly? I did. And I saw him uh, years later and I asked him if he remembered that. And he said he didn't. But he goes, I'll tell you this it's much easier to do a big league game than it is a minor league game. Because you're probably not the only one that's <laughs> ever asked him that, right? No, I'm sure I wasn't. But I always thank him. And he was a great, gracious man. And just think, Jack Buck and Harry Carey shared the airwaves together here in St. Louis. And they weren't exactly buddies either at that time. Right. But they were on the same broadcast. Amazing. There's a base hit to left. Tommy Pham continues his run against the Brewers. Pham with his first hit of the night. He has seven hits now against Milwaukee in the last two weeks. Uh, young man uh, hanging a breaking pitch up in his zone and Bam able to wait back and knock it into left field. That was a 2 2 pitch. So the curveball has been inconsistent tonight. He's thrown some good ones, but he's also hung a few. Two on, one out. Here is Hayward. Youngman needs a double play, but Hayward's a tough guy to do that against. He runs well. There's a strike. That's where that two seam fastball comes into play. There hasn't been a whole lot of movement on that fastball tonight. Well, pitching has really struggled for the Brewers. Coming down the stretch, having a tough time getting a starter through five innings. Craig Council has exhausted his September bullpen so much so the Brewers made those call ups and he called up four pitchers. He's got two of those pitchers from Biloxi available in the bullpen tonight. We haven't seen them yet, but they are available. And yeah, the Brewers have two quality starts in the last two runs through the rotation, both coming from Zach Davies. And both have been exactly six innings. Six innings of shutout ball last night for Davies. But the Brewers are a different team when a pitcher pitches like Davies did last night because their winning bullpen scenario is very good. Yeah. Davies to Will Smith to Jeffress to K Rod last night. And a 4 1 win. Oh, and to the count on Hayward. Curveball on the ground. Jeanette is over and his play is in first base. For the second out, both runners advance. And Johnny Peralta will get a big hand as he is announced. His home run, the game changer for the Cardinals, down 3 0. Peralta, a three run home run last inning to tie it up. 17th homer of the season. 400 foot blast in the left center. Another high pitch count for Taylor Youngman, not yet through the fifth inning, almost 90. Pitch counts have been getting to him in his last three starts. David Goforth is in the bullpen. 
Youngman might have one more hitter, and there's a knee buckler, a curveball for a strike. And it's one and one on Peralta. Second and third for the Cardinals. Brewers down a run and a strike. Outside corner, he hit it. Curveball again. Peralta lays off at this time. Doesn't seem to have that uh, sharp bite at the end that we saw early in the season for Youngman. And when it's kind of just kind of rolls up there, hitters can see it pretty early and get a pretty good swing on it. Youngman and Maldonado having a tough time agreeing on a pitch here. Maldonado is on his way out. Youngman certainly has a game plan. He knows what he wants to do. He, he's not one to defer. It's all part of the process for Youngman. Greg Council trying to push him as much as he can in September, try to get him into a hundred and 80, 190 innings this year. That'll set him up for next year to go over 200 if he has a good season. And it's inside. He hit him. Peralta hit by a pitch on a two strike count. And that will load the bases here in the fifth inning. And Peralta is not happy. You know, just trying to come inside. Got him on that pad right on the front arm. And up will take first base. Cardinals uh, take exception very quickly to stuff like that. So this is a big spot for Youngman. Bases loaded, two outs. Here is Piscotti, who homered his last time up to give the Cardinals the lead. And a wave and a miss. No, he checked his swing. Wow. Looked like a swing to me, but not according to the crew chief over there, Brian Gorman. Hey, we saw that yeah, yesterday in Chicago. We haven't seen any ring ups on check swings. And a lot of ones that could have gone either way last night and tonight haven't been called. Ball and no strikes. Two and zero. Oh. Nowhere to put him. And now Youngman's got to make a dangerous pitch. This is probably going to be Youngman's last hitter, regardless of what happens. Two balls, no strikes. Here it comes. Piscotti takes the ball. Three and zero. Oh. Go for it. He's ready in the bullpen. Council is going to let Youngman ride one more hitter. See if he can get through the inning. Does Piscotti have a green light? 3 0. We'll see. There's a strike. Yeah, two more right there. He's going to get out of the inning. That's a perfect pitch. One more, one more. Go back to the well. Well, Youngman's back in the count. Three and two, bases loaded, two outs. All three runners will get a head start here. Cardinals lead by a run. And here it comes, and a swing, a shot back up the middle, base hit. 
two runs are going to come in. The throw goes to third. The tag and out at third. The second run counts, but the final out of the inning at third base. Steven Piscotti is having a night. Schaefer ends the inning, but Piscotti drives in RBIs two and three, and St. Louis up three. Cardinals have six unanswered runs on the board a four run fourth added two in the fifth and on Perez had the last run producing hit for the Brewers. That was a two RBI double in the first inning. Columbia St. Mary's worth another look. Just another good piece of hitting by Aaron Perez taking that pitch away and tuck it inside that first baseline for a couple of RBIs. Cardinals have made a pitching change. Michael Walker goes five innings. He's in line for the win. And here is Steve Ciszek now for St. Louis. Yeah, the side armor, a 55th appearance. A 373 earned run average. Yeah, sinker bowler gets a lot of ground ball outs. A 6-6 submarine pitcher. Cardinals got him from the Marlins in a trade earlier this season. He had made 32 appearances with the Marlins. He was their closer. And then uh, traded. Started to struggle as a member of the Marlins. Cardinals gave up a good young pitching prospect, Kyle Bearclaw, who's a very hard thrower and is uh, pitching well for the Marlins now to get the experienced Ciszek. Ground ball to third base. Carpenter over the top makes a play for out number one. And Ctech with four saves, one of them coming in his last appearance on the, the 22nd a couple of days ago against Cincinnati, a scoreless inning. With a couple of strikeouts. Well, you really have to make this guy get his pitches up in the strike zone before you get the two strikes. You're going to be beating baseballs into the ground all night. Martin Maldonado against Ciszek here with one away. Ciszek had back to back seasons of 30 plus saves and as a matter of fact last year. As a 28 year old he saved 39 for the Marlins. Never really had him pegged as a closer but almost. Out of necessity he ended up closing games. For Miami and. Uh, he did a good job in that role for them last season. Mike Matheny has said he is going to limit the outings for Trevor Rosenthal for the rest of the regular season. He's going to be very cautious with his closer. Doesn't want to have closer burnout this year and for the long term with Rosenthal, who's one of the elite closers in the game now. 
So there will be a rotation of pitchers I would imagine getting save opportunities for Matheny. Cardinals have eight different guys with saves this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and Ciszek is one of them. He has one save. He had three with the Marlins. Lost that role to A.J. Ramos this season. Yeah, the Cardinals uh, have 61 saves this year as a team. 61. They do play a lot of close games, right? right and they yeah. have a lot of comebacks late. Haven't been scoring a lot of runs. The pitching's been very good. Low scoring games. 61 saves, and Rosenthal has 47 of them. Kevin Segrist, the left hander, has six. Wonder what the Cardinal bullpen's going to be like going to the finish line nowadays. That's a huge presence out there in Adam Wainwright. I mean, that is a major. Basically an acquisition for the Cardinals. In mid September late September. Best earned run average. In all of baseball their starters carry the load but their relievers are very good too as Maldonado strikes out C check. Two up two down with his first K. There's been some talk that Wainwright might end up in a setup role. I mean, you certainly don't want to have him close games because you have Rosenthal, but you put Wainwright in a setup role. And remember, he has flourished in the bullpen in the postseason in the past. Back in 06, as he was just getting to the big leagues, that was his spot. That was a World Series champion ball club, too. Wainwright was key out of the bullpen in that one after being traded from the Braves. Interesting to see how the bullpen is going to look, and it's going to be interesting to see how the the bench is going to look. They have a lot of very talented players that Mike Matheny can choose from. I mean, who would have thought that Tommy Pham would be doing what he's doing right now, right. I mean, early in the season? You got the Scotty. You got you know Grichik. Grichik's hurt. Is he going to make it? You never know. I mean they're going essentially in their outfield depth they're going seven eight deep right and getting production from those players. Yadiel Rivera a little tapper in front of the plate Tony Cruz makes a play to win the inning and Ciszek works a three up three down sixth inning. Six three as we go to the bottom of the six inning. St. Louis coming to bat. Brewers on deck. 2016 is all set. Sunday, January 31st at the Wisconsin Center in downtown Milwaukee. If you purchase your tickets for the annual Fan Fest by December 1st, you'll receive a free ticket voucher for select 2016 April home games. And for details, go to Brewers.com/slash on deck. 
David Goforth on the mound for the Brewers in relief of Taylor Youngman. Youngman struggles through five innings. He was going good through three and ran into a wall in the fourth and the fifth. Yeah, go for it. Uh, last pitch on Monday against the Cubs. Starts the scoreless inning. Yeah, a couple of walks, a strikeout. 17th appearance for David and a 450 yard run average. I would imagine Craig Towns lay a couple of innings out of him here tonight. Randall Gritchuk will lead off for the Cardinals. He was due up when Peralta was thrown out at third base to end the last inning after Piscotty's two RBI single. Piscotty's driven in three tonight, a homer and a two RBI hit as Gritchick rips that one past Perez. Extra bases for Randall Gritchick. And now you see why they want him in the lineup. Two out of three tonight. A leadoff double here in the sixth inning. Can't make mistakes with the fastball with it to these guys. I mean, that one right down the middle, and Gritchick turns it around and nearly undresses Perez down at third. Tried to play it off to the side, right through him, and you now down in the corner. David Goforth facing Colton Wong now after a leadoff double. Goforth is from Mississippi. Played his college ball at Ole Miss. Had a big win. Beat Alabama. Yeah. That was. Excited about that. Did big you college. see that game? Did not. Working. We were working that day. No, no. It was on after the game. I was uh, doing my post game no try. <laughs> Perez. Over in foul grounds, he makes a catch for out number one. Best part of that game was after we got home, it was on, and yeah, well, a lot of know, points scored in the fourth quarter. Just show up and start talking here. Everybody's got to do their part. I know, but you know, after a game, you sit down, you have a beer, and you watch a football game. There's nothing wrong with that. That was fun. <laughs> the Rebs. Yeah, go for it. Love this time in Oxford, and, and he's from Mississippi too. So yeah, he's from. Philadelphia, Mississippi. That's two years in a row that Ole Miss beat Alabama. Yeah, how about that? He is a success story, David Goforth. No question. Able to fight his way to the big leagues. Was a seventh rounder. He was in the same draft as Youngman. And was a starting pitcher up until two years ago once he got to the upper levels of the minor leagues essentially a two pitch pitcher so they put him in the bullpen he ended up as the closer last season in Huntsville and double A had a great year there 27 saves in just 54 games at double A Huntsville last year yeah, it just needs to be a little bit more consistent with the slider and sometimes not able to throw for strikes and hangs at other times. But then every now and again, I mean, you're going to see a really good slider. That's when he has his good outings. Can't be hanging breaking pitches in the major leagues. Runner at second with one out. And a foul out of play. Now, most teams are on the hunt for those big, tall, strong right handers. Like Taylor Youngman and Jimmy Nelson and Peralta. Go for it. He doesn't fit that criteria. He's he's not a big guy at all. He's about 5'10 with his spikes on. But has a big arm. He can get it up there in the mid 90s. Everything's power with Go Forth though. He's 26 years of age. That's why he's best suited in the bullpen. One ball, two strikes. Tony Cruz, the catcher at the plate, and they'll ask if he went. He did not. Well, 
Well, as bad as this year has been at the big league level for the Brewers, this has been an open door for Brewers minor league players like go forth. They know opportunities are out there and a lot of these guys are taking advantage of their opportunities this season. And a swing and a miss. Cruz chases one. That's a good slider. Second out of the inning. First strikeout for Go Forth. Yeah, it was up in his zone. Not a lot of movement on it, but just enough to get Cruz off of it. Matheny's going to go back to his bench here. And Brandon Moss will pinch hit. One of those classic Cardinal pennant race pickups here. Brandon Moss was with the Indians. He signed a one year deal with Cleveland after a huge year with the A's last year. He made the All Star team last season with Oakland. Had a 25 homer season, but even though he was hitting home runs in Cleveland, it was pretty much a down year for him offensively, not hitting for average. And Cleveland felt like they wanted to give some younger guys playing time. A yeah, good bat to have coming off the bench in the postseason. Another guy that stays right on top of home plate. Look at that front foot right on the line. Inside almost hit him. As a Cardinal Moss, this is his 42nd game. So he played 94 games with Cleveland. 42nd here with. St. Louis has four homers, eight runs batted in, mostly coming off the bench. Only has 131 at bats in those 41 games. And he's late, swinging a miss, fastball by him. Right down the middle. Grichuk had a leadoff double. Go for it, trying to strand him there. And a called strike. Two and two on Moss. That slider's not breaking a whole lot, but it's the speed that's been pulling the hitters. Got the strikeout on Tony Cruz on that slider. Off the plate, that one caught the outside corner. Sometimes they spin, they don't do a whole lot, but you know, the change in velocity is just enough. Went back to it. Moss fouls it away. Last year was Moss's third postseason, so the Cardinals do like that fact, even though last year was just a one gamer for Oakland. They lost in the wild card game. He was with the A's in the postseason the last three seasons. A swing and a miss. Down he goes on strikes. Back to back K's for Go Forth. And a scoreless sixth inning. We go to the seventh. Cardinals lead it 6 3.
fourth added two more in the fifth inning. The Scotty with three runs batted in tonight. Our Powerball team home run count. Brewers are sitting on 138 home runs for the year. And they have three 20 plus homer players Davis, Lind, and Braun. And Brewers only have one home run on this uh, road trip so far. Changes rock. We got Mark Reynolds at first base. That's going to move Piscotti out to left field. So Matheny tightens up his defense with Gritchick out. And there is a new pitcher on the mound for the St. Louis Cardinals. Kevin Segrist, hard throwing left hander. And we talked about him. He's got six saves so far this year to go along with his 7 and 1 record out of the bullpen. 76th appearance. Many more strikeouts and innings pitched, 85 punch outs, and just shy of 69 innings. And Segrist can rush it up there in the low to mid 90s. And he's got a good slider to go with it. First ball swinging Segura. Segura getting a pinch hit at bat here in the seventh inning. Yadiel Rivera making his first big league start tonight at short. He played well out there. Figure Segura will be back in there tomorrow. Look out. Segrist drops Segura. Kind of automatic, isn't it, after the Cardinals get hit by a pitch? It's amazing. I mean, obviously not by design, not trying to hit Peralta. Any shape or form, but uh, Seager's coming up and in on Siggy. Nice play in the crowd. Lance Berkman making a play up there. Wonder where he's been. He's uh, aged a touch. Retirement. Uh, he's wearing <laughs> it well. <laughs> Ball and two strikes. Well, how many big hits did that guy get oh, against man. the Brewers over the years? Yeah, Lance with the Berkman. Astros and the Cardinals, right? right? Yeah. Man, what a player. Yeah. Always enjoyed watching him play. He went to the Yankees. Yep, there he is. Looks like one of John Smoltz's hat wigs right there. Those are nice. And Segura lines one to Wong for the out. Stayed right down on it, but hit it right at the Cardinals second baseman for out number one. Well, you can vote for your MVP and help us decide which Fox Sports Supports partner will be crowned the winner. The charity with the most votes at the end of the Brewers season will score big with a donation from QP and Abraham. Choose from American Heart Association of Wisconsin, Boys and Girls Clubs of Greater Milwaukee, or Fisher House, Wisconsin. To vote, visit foxsportswisconsin.com slash supports. Three great charities there. Yeah. Tough to choose, huh? Yeah. Fisher House is uh, up and running, and uh, or, or they're, they're building it now. They're in the process of getting it going. The project is up and running. Under construction. Right next door to Miller Park there, near the VA hospital. It's a really cool opportunity. You did an appearance over there earlier this year, didn't you? Yeah. At the Fisher House? Oh, that was last year, but there was a VA event that uh, went to with a bunch of players. Eddie Cedar was there. And right next door to the uh, where the Fisher House will be located. What a great concept that is. And it's kind of a Ronald McDonald house for military families that are soldiers getting treatment, getting rehab, and Great work that they do, the Fisher House folks in uh, Wisconsin. Two balls and a strike on Jeanette. One man out. Brewers need base runners. Six unanswered runs for St. Louis. 
feel like the Brewers had a chance to even have more on the board in that first inning. Remember, they ran into an out. Lind was thrown out at third base on that base hit RBI by Rogers. There's a strike. Jeanette thought it was inside. But they kind of stole a run when Santana ran right by Ed Cedar's stop sign. Aggressive base running. I guess you got to do that at this point. Put the pressure on the defense. See if you can steal a run or two. And Jeanette is down on strikes. It's a tough matchup for Jeanette. Segrist is electric. Don't get that. left side. Yeah, don't get many at bats against lefties. So think about the Cardinal bullpen right now. So they're going to go into the playoffs. You don't know what you're going to get from Wainwright, but Wainwright says his arm feels as strong as it has ever felt. He's had an Achilles injury. He's got very little wear and tear on his arm. And he's coming back through a simulated game yesterday. I mean, this guy is in a prime position to give them big time power and experience in the bullpen. So you get C-Sheck for the sixth inning. You'd have Segrist for the seventh. Wainwright could be your setup man, your eighth inning guy, and then Rosenthal. That is yeah, as well, good as it gets. Well, you got Randy Cho, you got Broxton down there. I, I'm not sure what more they need. You got Seth Manis. It's already a very good bullpen. Yeah, yeah. Those are all matchup type guys that right. you could use with, yeah. with Cho and boy. That's I think, you know, with all that we're looking at in this National League picture with the Cubs and the Pirates and the Cardinals, I think the Cubs have the best lineup. I think the Pirates have the most depth. They are as balanced as any team and a very formidable bullpen as well. Mm -hmm. But so many times in the postseason, it comes down to the bullpen. And the Cardinals, I think, have the strongest. Yeah, the issue is going to be that for the Cardinals to score runs. I mean, in the postseason, you're going to be facing some of the best pitching with all the guys that they have hurt. When we talk about, you know, Molina. You know, Matt Holiday, Adams, John Jay's been banged up all year. We'll see. Ground ball right back to Segrist. And he works a one, two, three, seventh inning with a strikeout. Stretch time at Bush Stadium. Six three Redbirds. <laughs> U verse rewind. Let's get you caught up here. It was a great start tonight for the Brew Crew. Jason Rogers had an RBI single in the first inning to get him on the board, and then Aaron Perez with two outs, a two RBI double, and the Brewers were out of the gates with a three nothing lead on Michael Waka, but it all changed with that swing by Johnny Peralta, three run homer off Youngman in the fourth. Next man up, Stephen Piscotti, put him ahead. The six homer of the year. That was a solo shot. Back to back 400 foot homers. And then it was Piscotti again. 
two outs in the fifth inning driving it a pair. And the final out at third base but damage done. Always somebody different with this Cardinals club driving in runs you know back when a Brewers homestand when the Cardinals were in town it was. Jason Hayward one night it was Tommy Pham for a couple of nights and tonight it's Piscotti. Cesar Jimenez will be on the mound rock he'll work the seventh inning for the Brewers. You know, two of those guys just talking about not necessarily the guys you think about when you're playing the Cardinals. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Jimenez has been pitching pretty well he had a couple of. Out he's back to back where he's having a difficult time throwing strikes but uh, overall he's been very good. You know, Jimenez pitched on Monday. Got roughed up a little bit three runs in an inning of work he's been unscored upon in 14 of 16. Facing Matt Carpenter to start the inning. Tommy Pham to follow then Jason Hayward got a couple of lefties in this. Grouping here for Jimenez. Which is why he's out there. Two, two Carpenter a swing and a miss. Jimenez gasses him up as best he can. <laughs> but right on the corner, pretty good pitch. You know, 90 miles an hour, maybe 91, but right there, doesn't matter how hard it is. Tough to get the sweet spot on that pitch. One away here in the seventh inning. Going to get a lot of consideration as we move into next season. Cesar Jimenez. Yeah, sure. They picked him up from the Phillies, claimed him off waivers. Lefties have the ability to stay around a long time. Start moving into a situational role. The only problem with Jimenez, at least throughout his career, has been his his walks, and that's something you can't have out of the bullpen. Sam with a grounder to short. Rivera. For the second out. You think about a lot of the uh, relief pitchers that have pitched, you know, 20 years, guys that have been pitching into their 40s, they're all lefties, right? Right. Mike Stamp. Really Randy Cho Cho out Cho there. <laughs> Man, why could not be left handed? Yeah. Now you have a boy, he tie his right hand behind his back. Because I think that would be frowned upon these days. Can't be. Tying up children rock. Okay? <laughs> you know what I mean. Do I? Make him a left hander. <laughs> One of these days, there's going to be a woman who's going to make it. Pitching? Somehow, I think it's going to be on the mound, don't you? I mean, it feels like it's going to have to be a lefty first, you know, but maybe a knuckleball pitcher or something like that. There's a there's a girl, a Japanese girl, I believe she's 15, and she has a knuckleball that's pretty legitimate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she, she actually is trying to make it. We'll see. That is a bouncer off of Rivera. Yeah, that one Hayward will reach. That one had some top spin on it. Really ate up Rivera as it got to him. Well, you would guess that's going to be an error. Yeah, this hop rate. Right here is what ate him up and off his chest and. And not sure how they're going to score it. <laughs> Haven't scored it yet. Got to be an error doesn't it? Well, if he comes up with it cleanly it's an easy out. You figure. Hayward's out. See Peralta broken bat 
base hit. And it will be scored as a hit on Hayward. So that's back to back singles now for the Cardinals. With two outs here in the seventh inning, and they threaten once again. Piscotti. Three runs batted in tonight. Home run and a two RBI single. That two RBI single came last inning, or two innings ago, with two outs in the inning. And he takes a ball low. There's a 16 year old female shortstop. I saw a video of her. Melissa Mayu, I couldn't remember her name. She's from France, and uh, she's in the scouting system right now. Mm -hmm. So I saw her. I saw a video of her swinging the bat. There's a base hit by Piscotti, and he went around third on his way home. And another run batted in for Piscotti, his fourth of the night, and he makes it a 7-3 ball game. Three consecutive hits for the Cardinals. Well, the Brewers not able to make the play up the middle on Jason Hayward. Uh, Word a base hit on it, and whether you think that's a hit or not, point is they didn't make the play. And you know, three hits with two outs and nobody on, and the Cardinals able to extend their lead now up seven to three. And he is having a career night. Four runs batted in on three hits. Stephen Piscotti. It was Tommy Pham in Milwaukee, and it's Stephen Piscotti here in St. Louis. Right. Never know, right? And here is Mark Reynolds, the He's former Brewer. Piscotti struck out his first time up, but three consecutive hits. By the way, if you're wondering, Piscotti's career high for RBIs is five in his rookie year. He's putting together some big games for the Cardinals. Mike Medina is going to have some very tough decisions on who to put on his postseason roster. No kidding, huh? Well, he gets the big bucks. He and John Mazalot. General manager going to have to get together on that. Tough problem to have, right? Got to give Mosellock a lot of credit, too. And he's done a great job putting this system together. Well, the inning is over, but the Cardinals keep it going here in St. Louis. Makes it 7 3 on the Scotty RBI if we go to the eighth. Lewis seven unanswered runs and Piscotti's driven in four of them. Yadiel Rivera is in our Columbia's or rather Marshfield Clinic's shining moment of the game. His first 
major league hit. Yadiel Rivera came in the second inning, single, first big league start tonight. And he is on the board. They save that baseball, and there's a spot on his trophy case forever. New pitcher rock is Randy Choate. Yeah, one of three left handers. They've used two of them. They got Lyons still down there from the left side. 68, uh, 69th appearance for Choate, a 367 earned run average. Last pitch against the Chicago Cubs here at Bush Stadium back on the 18th. And as usual, he goes in there, doesn't stay in there long at third of an inning. That's how you stick around for as long as he has. You don't overuse him. Jonathan Lucroy is going to get a pinch hit at bat. Good to see Lucroy back. Yeah. Going through the concussion protocol. He was hit by a foul ball in Miami on the last road trip. And I didn't think much of it at the time, but he came out of the game and thought it might be a couple of days. Got to believe time he's going to be off a little bit. This is the play right here. Get him, gets him right on the chin. And it rattles his cage a little bit. And who would have thought he would have been out this long? Lucroy's last at bat was September 8th. He was actually swinging about very well until that game. Lucroy was 0 for 5 in that game on September 8th. He finished the game actually, caught the whole game, and that's when. Uh, the concussion symptoms started to set in for Lucroy. He was having a big late August and September. Had a long hitting streak going in that stretch. And it's good that he's able to get back in there, get some at bats. I mean, he's probably going to go over to first base. You know, pinch hitting for Adam Lind, and it'll just uh, be a little bit easier to get through the offseason knowing that. After that foul tip and that concussion, he's able to come back and play again and not have to sit it out all offseason and wonder. Lucroy was hitting 233. Batting average had got as low as 233 in uh, mid August. And then he went on a run here before that game where he took the foul ball of uh, a 14 game run where he had. Hits in 13 of those games and a lot of multi hit games had two three hit games in that stretch. And in about a month's worth of games, he raised his batting average 30 points. Hitting for a 300 average in the month of September. And the reason he's not close to the 300 is because of the terrible start that he got off to in April. Just couldn't buy a hit. And then he got hurt. Lucroy was hitting just 133 when he broke his toe in a game against the Cincinnati Reds April 20th. But Lucroy knows it's just one of those years, and he's hoping to come back in full health and be the all star caliber performer that he has been next season. The Brewers are going to need him. But Luke Roy and Lind and Ryan Braun in the lineup together with Santana and Davis, maybe. And I mean, the Brewers are going to have some thump next year, but they got to make sure that it starts at the top with the star players, and the star players have to be star players. Right. Yeah. Braun's got to be the bell cow of this offense. And you never know what the team's going to look like. You know, new general manager might have some different ideas as to how to go about the rebuild and. Nothing but question marks going into the offseason, but I'm sure they're going to be answered quickly. We're hoping to catch up with new general manager David Stearns in San Diego. He's going to make the trip. And we'll spend a little time with him, get to know him, find out what he what he plans. Lucroy down the left field line. That's going to get down for a base hit. And Piscotti will hold Lucroy to a single. Good play out there in left field, but Lucroy continues his hitting ways after all that time off. Yeah, two weeks and a uh, good battle with Randy Choate. Doesn't throw very hard. Pitch number eight. Able to dump it down the left field line, and that's going to be it for Randy Choate. Now, right handers coming up. Good for Luke. Back in the saddle. Here comes Jonathan Broxton. 
Chode is out. Brewers trail by four. They have a man on to start the eighth. At bats, Luke Croy comes right out of the gates, pinch hit appearance, he singles, which chases Randy Choate. How about our matchup tomorrow? We're back at a 6.30 airtime central. First pitch at 7.15, Ariel Pena and Carlos Martinez. Pena good again his last time out, picked up a win against Cincinnati. Two runs in five innings. Brewers have six starters right now. They are all rookies. Yeah, how good was uh, Carlos Martinez at Miller Park? Yeah. That's another wild card in the postseason for the Redbirds. All right, down in the Bronx, in 63rd appearance for the big fella, three and five record. Earned run average uh, under five. Jason Rogers with a base hit. His third hit of the night. Rogers, three out of four, two on to start this eighth inning, and the Brewers are making some noise here in St. Louis. And that Rogers batting average up to 294. Man. Actually, actually 299 after that base hit. I love the way he hits. You know, he looks like a big, strong power hitter, but actually, he's a line drive hitter and a good opposite field hitter. A success story. Just never any panic when he's up there at the plate, whether it's first pitch or he's got two strikes on him. Well, Santana could make this thing interesting. A swing away from making this a one run game. Domingo's hit six for the Brewers this year. Santana has been patient recently. He drew another walk. In his first plate appearance of the game. In 30 games. As a member of the Brewers, Santana has 14 walks. Yeah, that's the pitch he's going to have to work on in the offseason. That slider, that slider with uh, two strikes on him. He's very patient early in the count. But there are times he will chase that slider away, like most uh, young hitters. <laughs> most hitters in general, basically. Santana has more walks already than Scooter Jeanette and Gene Segura in a hundred fewer games. Boy, what a swing. Powerful swing. He always looks like he's a tick late, but that's the interesting thing about Santana. He's got tremendous power to the opposite field. Yeah, even when he doesn't get it perfectly on the sweet spot. We've seen him do that a couple of times this year. Strong, so he doesn't have to get out on that front foot. Doesn't have to start that bad early. He's tall, long, and lean. A Corey Hart comparison. That's six five. One two pitch, and he got him. Broxton strikes him out. First out of the inning. 
steady diet of off speed pitches and he blew him away with his fastball at 97. Hernan Perez. Now when this season began the Brewers. And even if you go back into early spring training the Brewers were looking at Jonathan Broxton as their closer. Before they had signed Francisco Rodriguez. So he signed K Rod and. You're looking at this bullpen thinking all right. You got eight nine handled. Broxton a former closer former all star closer he's got the eight K Rod's got the ninth. But it did not work out well Broxton struggled in that role the Brewers. Eventually took him out of that role and then eventually traded him to St. Louis. Broxton will be a free agent at season's end. He's got the velocity back. I mean, when he was with the Dodgers, he was, you know, 97, 98, 99 miles an hour. He's maybe slowly but surely get it up there at about 97 these days. Last year with the Brewers, he wasn't throwing that hard. Called strike three, second out of the inning. Back to back K's. Good pitch to hit, too. A hanging slider. Check out that where this ends up. Boy, that's a hanger right at the top of the strike zone. Those are the ones that you can hit a long way. Perez thought it was high, it wasn't. So two are out here. Broxton has run his. Consecutive scoreless inning streak to 11 now coming out of that St. Louis bullpen. And Brewers going with Chris Davis to try and get back in this game. He's got the power to do it. Davis pinch hitting for Maldonado in the eighth. And Davis. Uncoiling on Broxton comes up empty. Yeah, he took up Broxton deep at Miller Park early in the season. That was a big home run that gave the Brewers a lead. See it again. No balls and a strike. Two on Lucroy's at second. Just returning tonight. No DL for Lucroy, but unavailable until tonight. He's single. That was off Choate. Then Rogers had a single off Broxton. He's at first. Brewers are down four. After leading three nothing in the first inning, and another swing and a miss. Oh, and two to count. To the count. Davis down on strikes. Broxton strikes out three in a row to end the inning. And a scoreless eight. Brewers still down four runs.
a good call there, Jeff. That was uh, against the Brewers. And, uh, yeah, he uh, put a stamp and uh, helped us all think about baseball's place after the horrible tragedy on September 11th, 2001. Yep, Jack Buck, something special. And you walk out, there's a <laughs> there's a statue out there, and there's an area where you walk by, and his, it, it's and like talks. a motion sensor. And he talks, And yeah. it kicks off the call, and it scared the life out of me the first time I walked by that thing. <laughs> No, but it's there for everybody to enjoy. Yeah, I remember that uh, that scene here at Bush Stadium, the old Bush Stadium. Javier Rivera makes a nice play to take care of Colton Wong. Gives so, you goosebumps uh, just thinking about that, being here for that. And nobody better to deliver a message like that than Jack Buck. A couple of the changes. Luke Croy will stay in to play first base. And Nevin Ashley will remain in the game. But we'll, we'll come into the game as the catcher. And Council has had enough out of Jimenez getting the lefty to start the inning. And now a pitching change here in the bottom of the eighth inning. So we got a major league debut coming up for the Brewers. Jonathan Barrios coming in. that you can find out more about what you have in your organization. We got a major league debut coming up here. Exciting times for Jonathan Barrios. Brewers got him in the Aramis Ramirez deal from the Pittsburgh Pirates. And Rock, he's a converted position player. Yeah, he was uh, he was an infielder all the way back in 2012. He went to the mound in 13. He's in that uh, Aramis Ramirez deal with the Pirates coming over from Pittsburgh. And uh, pitched pretty well in double A this year. 16 games. And a pretty good earned run average down there. I ended up closing games for the double A Shuckers of Biloxi. Had six saves. Hard throwing right hander. And he is greeted with a base hit off the bat of Tony Cruz, his first big league hitter. Single in the center field, Tony Cruz. Now you'll never experience that big league debut again, right? There's butterflies, the hearts pounding, I guess. Yeah. Just something that you're trying to get through and survive in advance. All, all goes away after your first play, your first at bat. You know, and uh, you know, Barrios' case, you know, first out, he's going to be waiting for that first out. Then he'll start to relax. Barrios, one of the group of six that came up from Biloxi on Tuesday. Biloxi played in the Southern League Championship game Monday. And they were all in the big leagues Tuesday. The two pitchers that are available in the bullpen from that Biloxi team is Barrios 
And Adrian Hauser, and there's the group of six. I mean, what a thrill for those guys to be able to have the season they had in Biloxi and then all come together. Not as much of a shock when you come up in a group like that. A little bit of familiarity. And Michael Reed is an outfielder. Yadiel Rivera, who made his first major league start tonight, infielder. And then four pitchers. And Lopez is going to make a start. Jorge Lopez and Tyler Wagner will both start games coming up. Barrios has Matt Adams in a one two count. Adams pinch hitting. A torn quad this year. Had Adams on the shelf for most of the season. Had surgery on that quad. He and Holiday with quad injuries. Holiday's was not near as uh, bad. But Adams has been able to come back. Yeah, he had surgery. Ground ball. Oh, it hit the base runner. So Adams at first, the base runner is out, and it'll be the second out of the inning. Second out, but Adams gets a base hit. It actually worked out pretty well for Adams. I think Jeanette would have been there to make the play. I don't know. Pretty close. It hits uh, Cruz in the foot. He's out on interference. And credit Matt Adams with the base hit. He cost Scooter Jeanette a highlight reel play. <laughs> That's what I'm going with. I think Scooter gets the put out though. Closest either that or Luke Roy. So Adams will be pinch run for Peter Borges is in. Two outs in the inning now. I'm going to go three unassisted on that one. Yeah, I think you're right. And then Adams with a pinch hit single. So two outs. Jonathan Barrios trying to survive his first outing in the big leagues. So Luke with a base hit and a put out tonight. Right. And a put out. He didn't even have to touch the baseball. Two put outs. Carpenter a swing and a miss. I love seeing these young guys come up, get a chance in the big leagues. Let's see what they have. You've been hearing about them for a while, and man, he got him. Carpenter strikes out. Welcome to the big leagues, Jonathan Barrios. Verified now. Strikes out Matt Carpenter to end the inning.
Barrios, his major league debut, he strikes out Matt Carpenter, picks up a couple of outs here, gives up a hit, and welcome to the big leagues. What a what a feeling for him. What an experience. And his families, his family, his friends, his, all the coaches along the way. Those all those memories start coming to mind when you make it to this level. And I bet he didn't think when he started uh, in professional baseball he would make his major league debut on the mound. Right. <laughs> He's an infielder. Yeah, he thought he was gonna yeah gonna be a hitter in the big leagues. Matt Belial will take over here in the ninth inning. A non-safe situation. A couple of guys get get on, and you're going to see Rosenthal in the ball game. He's starting to toss lightly. A couple of base runners, and you'll probably see Rosenthal. 33rd appearance for Belial, and a 284 earned run average. Well, here is Rivera, who takes a strike. Yadiel. In his first big league start tonight, he showed well this evening. Made some good plays at short. Got his first major league hit. He is one for three tonight against the Cardinals. So two of the six have appeared in games now. Now we know Tyler Wagner is going to start Saturday. And Jorge Lopez Tuesday in San Diego. Adrian Hauser. Big right handed pitcher a hard thrower is in the bullpen now and uh, the outfielder Michael Reed still awaiting his major league debut it'll come and there is Hauser very anxious to see him it'd be nice to see him in the game right. that means the Brewers uh, going to tie it up Brewers are going to need four or they could take the lead. And they probably see K Rod if they take. Yeah, then he'd sit him down. <laughs> well, he's getting some work in. He'll get in there soon enough. One of the four players the Brewers acquired from the Astros, Adrian Hauser. I was talking to a scout yesterday, and uh, he knows the Astros organization well. He's not with the Astros, but he was telling me, he goes, You guys, you guys did well in that Houston trade and talked specifically about Hauser, raving about Adrian Hauser and his stuff and his potential as a big leaguer, a starter maybe in the big leagues. Hard thrower, big power arm. Yeah, it might take a while, but yeah, hope to see him here in the big leagues. That's what you're trying to do in a season like this when you're on your way to a 90 plus loss season. You're trying to find those diamonds in the rough those who are going to be a part of your organization next season be a part of your big league team. Try to make a quick turnaround like a lot of teams have done this year like the, the Astros and the Rangers. The Mets twins twins. Rivera flies to right. And the wild. With his first out of the night. Zach Davies pitched well yesterday, his best showing. Six shutout innings against the heavy hitting Cubs. I don't think any team has turned it around as fast as the Cubs with all of their young talent. They've got three rookies in their lineup that are major contributors right now Schwarber and Bryant and Addison Russell. Only time will tell. Shane Peterson getting a pinch hit appearance in the ninth. Don't forget tomorrow we're on an hour later back to a 715 central first pitch 630 airtime. Ariel Pena will be on the mound against Martinez. Saturday is on FS1. Not Fox Sports Wisconsin.
FS1 starting at there's a pregame show at 5:30. Six o'clock is airtime for that one. As Belial makes a play, underhand flip over to first for out number two. Peterson is out. And to the top of the order now. Scooter Jeanette, last hope for the Brewers. All started out rosy for the crew tonight. Three runs in the first. Taylor Youngman with three scoreless innings to start. And it all fell apart in the fourth inning. Johnny Peralta with a three run homer. Piscotti, the next batter homer, to give the Cardinals the lead, and they have not looked back. Piscotti with four runs batted in tonight. As Jeanette in the right field, a base hit. Keeps the inning alive. Yeah, get another man on and you know, bring Rosenthal in. Maybe it'll affect him tomorrow. One day leads to another. He's starting to throw. Cardinals are hot again. They've won eight of ten. They've got that late September push going to seal up a division. A win tonight. They drop their magic number to six. And who would have thought, right? 97 wins it with a win tonight, and they still have to stay on the gas. Pittsburgh right behind them. You would think that they'd be cruising into the postseason. Not the case. Cardinals have nine games left after tonight, and they have a three game series with the Pirates in Pittsburgh at the end of the month. Pirates had a comeback win today in Colorado. Pedro Alvarez with an eighth inning three run homer, and they beat the Rockies. Coming off the deck there in Denver, Pittsburgh. Swept the Rockies. They've won six straight. And they are now, the Pirates are now three and a half games ahead of the Cubs for that wild card spot, the top wild card spot. And they're four back of St. Louis with three big ones to play against each other. No balls and a strike on Schaefer. Michael Waka is in line for the win. It would be his 17th victory of the season. He pitched just five innings tonight. Gave up three earned runs. Looked pretty good after the first inning. Ground ball to third. Carpenter makes the play and that's the ball game. The Cardinals win. St. Louis inching their way toward a 100 win season. They're now 97 and 56. 41 games over 500. Wow. And a four game lead in the division. Their magic number is down to six with nine to play. Piscotti driving in four. He was the star offensively tonight. Michael Walker beats Taylor Youngman. Time for Brewers Live. Let's check in with Jeff Grayson. He's standing by in our Fox Sports Wisconsin studio. Jeff. 